We're going to go ahead and get the program started. I apologize, being a little bit late, we just had our Hall of Fame induction over in the Morse Event Center and just trying to keep things going here. So thank you very much for your patience. Uh, my name is Corey Anderson. I am your athletic director. Uh, welcome to our seventh annual Champions of Character Hall of Fame Awards Ceremony. This event was established six years ago in, in order to honor you, our Northwest Christian University student athletes and teams. Our Northwest Christian University student athletes and teams for 2013. Also tonight, we will be presenting our 2013 Hall of Fame inductee, Coach Dave Lip. At this time, I would like to introduce uh, Pastor Troy Dean to come up for invocation before the event. Good evening. Why don't we bow for a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you for this night and thank you for this day of celebration. Thank you for the opportunity that we can look back and be thankful for the good times and the successes. But Father, you seem to take athletics and this world of competition and infuse it with so many different stories for us and so many different lessons about life. So Father, tonight, even as we celebrate those who have achieved great things, Father, each one of us remembers stories of both victory, but also of defeat. And that Father, that you use these kinds of events to shape and form us into the kind of people that you desire for us to be. And Father, it's just in those times of testing and difficulty that you sometimes use to make us more aware of who you are, of your grace, of a strength that comes from beyond ourselves, and Father, even insight into what it means to be a man or woman of God beyond just the athletics. So Father, we ask that you would bless this evening, and even as we celebrate these great victories and these great achievements, that we would not miss the lessons that you've um, embedded into these events and athletics as well. Father, thank you for your son, and it's his name that we pray. And everybody said, amen. Thank you, P. Troy. Um, at this time, I'd like to introduce our coaches, athletic staff, administration, and guests of honor that are in, in attendance tonight. Um, I don't think President Womack has made it over from the Morris Event Center yet. Don't see him. Uh, Michael Fuller, our Vice President for Student Development and Enrollment. Pastor Troy, our campus pastor. Uh, Sarah Freeman, Assistant Athletic Director. Nick Askew, our Sports Information Director. Pam Welsh, our Athletic Trainer. Um, Heike McNeil, Head Cross Country and Assistant Co or, and Distance Track Coach. Uh, Dan Jackson, Head Track and Assistant Cross Country Coach. Julie Strand, head softball coach. Nick Boyles, assistant softball coach. Brett Bentley, director of soccer. Theo Porter, associate head women's soccer coach. Luke Jackson, head men's basketball coach. Am I missing any coaches? I don't think so. Perfect. Um, Dwayne Cox, class of 1966, inaugural Hall of Fame class of 2007, Mike Peterson, class of 1983, inaugural Hall of Fame class of 2007, and our special guest of honor tonight, Coach Dave Lipp, class of 1971, NCU Hall of Fame class, 2013. As the 2012-13 academic year comes to a close, it allows time to reflect upon where we have been and accomplishments that have been achieved. We're just finishing up our seventh year in association with the NAIA and our sixth year competing in the Cascade Collegiate Conference. While there has been, certainly been, the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat, through it all, the one constant has been our Christ-centered student athletes and coaches competing with a focus on community service and spiritual growth. At this time, I would like to uh, at this time, I'd like to have all of our chaplain captains to please stand and be recognized. Those of you that are here. As an NEI institution, we preach and do our best to practice the five core values of the NEI's champions of character model. Respect, integrity, responsibility, servant leadership, and sportsmanship. 
You are being honored here tonight because you embody these core values from your athletic accomplishments to your academic achievements. You are all champions of character. Going through and just kind of looking at stats and so much of Nick and I's conversation ends up being statistically based, it's always interesting. I start taking some notes and just start taking some mental uh, thoughts on just our year with numbers. This year we've had one NAI National Player of the Week with freshman Kristen Fulbright with women's soccer. We've had one NAI Honorable, Men Honorable Mention All-American with senior Tammy Brown with volleyball. We've had one Cascade Collegiate Conference Newcomer of the Year with senior Tammy Brown in volleyball. This was the first time that our, women's vol that our volleyball team qualified for the Cascade Collegiate Conference Tournament. This was the second consecutive appearance at the NAI Nationals for our women's cross country team where they finished 14th. We've had four COSIDA Capital One Academic All District selections. We've had 12 Cascade Collegiate Conference Player of the, Player of the Week honorees. We've had 13 student athletes earn the distinction of being named by the NAIA as a scholar athlete. We've had 14 student athletes earn all Cascade Conference athletic honors. We've had 44 student athletes earn recognition as a Cascade Conference scholar athlete. But I think the most important statistic at all really isn't even a statistic. It's the number of our individuals, the number of our student athletes, the number of our teams that really get in tune with the servant leadership that are out there, whether it's Project Hope, whether it's the Special Olympics, whether it's St. Vincent, Vincent de Paul's Turkey Drive, whether it's the Foster Chil Children's Christmas Party, it's uh, Hannah's House, it's working at Gillum Elementary School. So, and I know there's more to the list, but we as an institution, I know myself as an athletic director, take as much pride and often more, uh, just being more proud of our student athletes when they're out in the community and they're, and they're giving. And they're not necessarily doing something to serve themselves, they're doing something to serve others. And that's the thing, and that's the aspect that those kids are gonna walk out of Northwest Christian University in being able to take in their future endeavors. At this time, I would like to bring up our first presenter tonight, presenting the Sports Information Legacy Award, Mr. Nick Askew. Good evening. The Sports Information Legacy Award is given each year to honor someone that will leave their mark on NCO athletics long after they've said goodbye. The Legacy Award honors statistical achievement and contributions to their team, the athletic department, and the university. This year's winner leaves an incredible legacy in her sport, giving everything she has had playing through injuries to rack up multiple awards and broken records. First for her incredible list of honors. Off the field, she has earned six academic all-conference awards, five NAIA National Scholar Athlete Awards, and she was a Capital One Academic All-America First Team selection in 2012. She was one of our inaugural members of the National Collegiate Athletic Honor Society at NCU last year after finishing her undergraduate career with a 3.90 GPA. On the field, she has been a two-time Cascade Conference Athlete of the Week and has been selected to five all-conference teams. She was the CCC champion in the 10,000 meter run in each of the past two years, and she went on to earn All-American honors in the 10K last season. She was an NAI All-American in cross country in 2011, leading her team to a fourth place finish at the NAI National Championships, the best season for any NCU team since joining the NAI in 2006. She holds five of the top 25 cross country times in both the 5K and 10K races. In track and field, she holds two of the 10 fastest times in the 5K and she owns eight of the top 10 times in the 10,000 meters. This season, she broke her own 10K record by a full minute and still currently holds the top time this season in the entire NAI. Best of all, with the end of her final track season still to come, there might be even more of a legacy still to be created. The winner of the 2013 Sports Information Legacy Award is Stephanie Hescock. Congratulations, Stephanie. Our next presenter is our athletic trainer, Pamela Welsh.
before I give away the Perseverance Awards, I wanted to thank everybody for making my first year here at NCU so great and awesome and making me feel so welcome. There isn't a better administrative staff that I'd like to work with, as well as the coaching staff here at NCU. And for all the athletes I know, you've had to wait so patiently in the training room so many times, especially in the fall. Um, whether it's you had to wait an hour or come back later in the day or even the next day to receive treatment, I thank you for all of your patience. And I really hope that you guys felt like you got the one-on-one -on -one time that you truly deserved. Um, and it's been such a privilege for me to share all of your achievements and victories, whether on and off the field. Um, I felt very special and I got close to so many of you. And I'm looking forward to the years to come that I have here at NCU. So the first recipient of the Perseverance Award was one of my first introductions to NCU. She even contacted me by email before I left Kansas City and arrived here in Eugene. She was still on crutches by the time she arrived, um, coming off of a rehab or off of a surgery. Um, there are many times where she let other teammates and other student athletes go ahead of her before treatment because she, you know, wasn't going to be practicing that day because she was still rehabbing. Um, and even though there were a few step backs during her rehab, she kept going forward, working harder and harder every single day, came in every single day for treatment. Um, and she even completed her rehab at the allotted time from her orthopedic surgeon and even surprised her physical therapist back home by how well and how fast she was progressing. She entered the season behind other athletes because she didn't have the entire fall to practice like they did. But she became very valuable, especially at the end of this season, playing multiple positions on the softball field. She's one of the most genuinely kind and friendly people that I know. And I'd like to present Allie Mitleider as a Perseverance Award. The second recipient is somebody that I wish I had seen play while he was healthy. Um, he started off the year with such high hopes, looking forward to the cortisone shots that he was promised to receive. Um, he got his first shot in October uh, but for his back, but he still had issues with his hip. And so we convinced his doctor to give him a shot in the hip, and he almost felt unstoppable. It was fantastic. Um, but right around Thanksgiving time, the shot started wearing off, and he was in tremendous pain again. Um, I pulled out as many tricks out of my tool bag as possible to try to make him feel better, even a daily uh, pulling of his hip to try to make it feel better with a resoundingly loud large pop, um, but he came down every single day for treatment, and he even came down sometimes during practice uh, to get a little bit more work done to try to get him through, and then got his third shot again right before Christmas, so that way he would have an extra long uh, rest time in order to feel prepared for the second half of the season. But sadly, that last shot didn't work as well as we wanted to. So he had to finish out the second half of the season in immense pain. Um, but he pushed hard through every practice, even on days where he could barely walk. Um, he often had the most heart and determination on game days, which made it even more difficult to watch that he couldn't put in 100% of effort. Uh, but he pushed through and completed the season, and now that he has had time off, he's looking a lot better and doing much better and has a lot less pain. And there is no one else that I could think that deserves a Perseverance Award more than Greg Shepard.
Thank you, Pam. I had to chuckle. Obviously, I was Greg's basketball coach, and the days that Pam would pull his leg and move his hip or whatever, and Greg would come upstairs, coach, man, that felt so good. And, of course, it was like five minutes later, he was running around doing something, and all of a sudden, he was like, oh, go back down and see Pam. That happened more than we would like to remember. Um, at this time, I would like to honor our Cascade Conference scholar athletes. If you're in attendance and your name's up on that screen, or if your name's supposed to be on that screen and you're in attendance, please stand. <laughs> to be a student athlete, uh, a CCC and, uh, scholar athlete, you have to be at least a sophomore in standing and have a 3.2 GPA. Now, there's another list that's going to go up, and that is our NAIA scholar athletes. And those students, so if your name's on that list, please stand, or if it should be on that list, please stand. Those students are a junior or above and have a 3.5 GPA or higher. At this time, I would like to bring Michael Fuller up to present our Chi Alpha Sigma Honor Society. At NCU, we talk a great deal about wisdom informed by faith leading to lives of service. So this past year, in 2012, when we joined the National College Athletic Honor Society, known as Chi Alpha Sigma, it was simply a good fit. It described exactly what we were trying to achieve as an athletic department and what we were trying to promote. Now, being a part of this honor society is one of the highest academic achievements among Beacon athletes. In order to qualify for membership in Chi Alpha Sigma, a student athlete must be a four-year student athlete at NCU. They must earn a letter for participation in their sport and carry a cumulative GPA of 3.8 or higher. That's a big deal, being a student athlete and carrying a 3.8 or higher. Nominees must be recommended by the chapter advisor and have the endorsement of his or her head coach. Finally, members of Chi Alpha Sigma must display the qualities of a champion of character at NCU. Inductees will be honored tonight, and then again during Wednesday's convocation chapel, where they will receive a blue and go or yellow and gold cord to be worn at commencement. Last year, four student athletes were inducted as the inaugural group for the Honor Society, and this year that trend continues. By the way, the trend is women. Four women last year, two women. Let's go, man. Let's step up um, on the list. Please help me welcome and congratulate the 2013 inductees into the National Collegiate Athletic Honor Society, women's basketball players, Allie Bruns and Keegan Clark. Our next awards are our Scholar Athletes of the Year. Now I have to, I'm gonna be a little impromptu. Uh, our faculty athletic rep, Doyle Schrader, I found out as I walked through the doors, is sick and isn't here tonight and he was presenting. So with that, I would like to bring all four of these student athletes up together just so I can talk about them as a group just because I don't have as much information. So Allie Bruns, please come forward for women's basketball. Sarah Krofcheck. Women's golf, Michael Bellamy, cross country and track, Calvin Green, men's golf. I'm gonna hand them their plaques here, but I need to read what's on them. So Allie 
is our starting point guard for women's basketball. Allie is carrying a 3.87 GPA in accounting. Okay, that is going to get you a good job. Let me tell you that right now. Nope, stay up here, Allie. Sarah Krofchak is was our number one golfer for our women's golf team this year, and she had, carries a, a 3.73 GPA in teacher education. My guess is wherever she, that Sarah is teaching at next year, the years to come, if they don't have a women's golf team, they probably will, and I hope she's helping coach it. So congratulations. Michael Bellamy is a senior, and he competes in cross country and track. Michael currently carries a 4.0 GPA in exercise science, and knowing his mother and father, I know how proud of them, or proud of him that they are, but also, I just know that hopefully you're going to be able to, with the exercise science, not so much your dad, but hopefully you can teach your mom a thing or two about running. <laughs> And last but certainly not least, Calvin Green is a, uh, a senior academically, but a junior in golf. Uh, Calvin carries a 3.92, also in exercise science. And let me tell you, last year Calvin played basketball, and he was doing some sort of a statistical or accounting report or something, and he would always come to me and wanting our stats, and he was forming logarithms or doing something with them. And he would show me what he figured out with our stats afterwards. All I knew is we either won or lost the game. What he was giving me went way beyond what I was able to understand. So Calvin Green, also one of our male scholar athletes of the year. As I said earlier tonight, we had our Hall of Fame induction for Coach Lip. During Coach Lip's 23... During uh, his 23 seasons as the, as the head coach of the men's basketball program, Coach Lip led NCU to 13 national championship tournament appearances, winning five national titles. His teams won three straight National Bible College Athletic Association championships from 1983 to 1985 and back-to-back -back National Small College Athletic Association championships in 1998 and 1999. Coach Lip is NCU's all-time wins leader with 438 victories, holding a 639 career winning percentage. He produced 10 20 win seasons. Coach Lipp was associated with NCU Athletic Department for more than 40 years, beginning as a player and student trainer in the late 1960s. He played three seasons with the Crusader basketball team, earning team MVP honors twice and garnering all conference honors in 1971. And then Coach Lipp also played baseball back when NCC had a baseball team back in the day. At this time, I would like to bring up uh, 2007 NCU Athletic Hall of Fame members, Dwayne Cox and Mike Peterson, to present and re-induct Coach Lipt into the NCU Athletic Hall of Fame. since they gave us these nice jackets, I ought to wear it, shouldn't I? <laughs> Proudly, I will say. I'll try to keep this short, Dave. I had the privilege of recruiting Dave out of high school. And um, I made such a great impression on him, he signed with the New York Mets and decided not to play basketball. But I kept an eye on him, and after a couple years, and he was moving up in their farm system, I got a call. And much to my surprise, the question was, Coach, do you still want a point guard? He explained to me he could not handle the lack of values, the lack of morals, and things like that that were taking place in the farm systems and the kind of athletes he had to be around. And that said a whale of a lot to me about Dave Lip. Dave came his freshman year you that have been managers know that that's a lot of grub work. But because he was a professional athlete, he could not play basketball. But fortunately, during his freshman year, that changed. And so he could play basketball, and he did for us for three years, 
winning all conference honors and voted his MVP by his teammates two years. Dave and I have had a relationship for 46 years. First as a student, then I brought him on my staff as an assistant. And in those days, we were part of the NLCAA, the National Association. We won the regional, the West Coast, made our first trip to the Nationals, had our first two All-American players. We're ranked first in the country at one time, in the top 10 several times. We got players larger schools wanted and they couldn't understand how we got them. I attribute a lot of that to Dave Lipp. Not only was he a great coach, a good recruiter, but more than that, he mentored, he prayed with. He was a prayer warrior for me and my family, I know, and he, he was with many players. But the thing that Dave made the biggest impact was is helping young people change their lives and making Christ first. I'll never, never be without a friend in Christ as long as Dave is alive because he truly is that to me. And our 46 years have gone fast, bub, but we're both still alive to tell about it. Praise God. Thanks. I, I thought it was very fitting when, when I got the invitation from Dave to come and, and be a part of his Hall of Fame presentation that this was done on a weekend, on a day actually, where you're honoring champions of character because that's who Dave Lipp is. I, I told the group over there that I had the easiest job on the planet today and that was I got to say nice things about Dave Lipp. There is no easier job than that. The thing that I would tell you is that David is a person of immense character and he's a person that has shaped the lives of everyone he's come into contact. I had the good fortune of knowing Dave as a player. He recruited me, and then I played for Dave, and then I had the very good fortune of being able to coach with Dave. He gave me my first job. I, my senior year, Coach Cox was our head coach. He retired. Dave became the head coach, and, and I became his assistant. And I, I can tell you that the thing that has stuck with me about David uh, through all these years more than anything else is the relationships that he has with all the guys that played for him We had so many of our former players over there in that building who came from all over the country to see Dave today And I think that speaks volumes about who he is as a person who he was as a coach who he who he has been his entire life when when I first started working for Dave I was so excited because all I ever wanted to do was coach growing up. And I started working with Dave, and he gave me my assignments, and he told me what we we're going to do. And then he said, and we're going to have discipleship. I said, that sounds good. He said, it's going to be at 6 o'clock on Wednesdays. Okay, and I was a 23-year-old college student, and because I came to NCC from a junior college, I got to be on the seven-year plan. It was awesome. And Dave said, we're going to have discipleship. So I was still going to class, and I was still trying to coach, and Patty and I were married. And I mean, I had a lot of, I was spinning a lot of plates. And I said, Wednesday at 6, that's awesome, because practice is from 3 to 5.30, so then we can grab a quick shower and have discipleship. He said, no, young man, that is 6 a.m. <laughs> that was a part of the day with which I was unfamiliar. But we met every morning at 6 a.m. and had discipleship. And I can tell you that I grew more as a person during those years with Dave and it made me a better person, a uh, better father, a better husband, a better coach uh, because of my contact with him. And, and I know this, that over the last 35 years, I've known Dave as a coach, a mentor, a boss, a teammate, an advisor, and a friend. And he went into the NCU Athletic Hall of Fame today. But if there were halls of fame for all of those things, he would be a first ballot inductee, and there's absolutely no question. So it's my privilege to introduce you to this year's Hall of Fame inductee, Dave Lemp. Pete has to leave, so Patty, 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 be coachable, love you. I 
Uh, you need to know I used to sit in these chairs. They used to face the other direction. Uh, but you need to know, if I was going to tell you anything that I think maybe be a little nugget for you, is to realize that at this time of your life, God is trying to do something special in your life that maybe there won't be another opportunity for that to happen. Deep in the well with him. Make some eternal deposits with him. And he'll give you blessings beyond your imagination. The Lord can do things that you can't think of. Here's a verse for you to hang on to. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what the Lord has in store for those who love him. Don't think that your degree is going to open doors even though it will. Don't think that it's going to make you successful even though it could. The Lord is the one who brings the blessings. And he's the one that will make the difference in your life. Believe it and trust and obey. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. Um, up next is our moment of the year. For this, and I haven't even told him I'm doing this, will uh, Coach Brent Bentley come on up here with me? I'm going to give a little detail, but Brett could give more detail because he's actually the coach of the, uh, uh, during the coach of this game. So our moment of the year this year is our, has to do with our women's soccer team. Back on October 23rd, we are playing then NAIA number one ranked Concordia. And it was interesting. It was the morning of the game, and I woke up, and I, I'm a newspaper reader. A lot of young people aren't newspaper readers. One day, I won't be there because there won't be any more newspapers. But every morning, I read the Register Guard, and there was an article about the Concordia coach who used to be the head coach at Sheldon. And so on the front page of the sports page, here was an article about their coach, and they were playing you know, all about the coach in Concordia. And, oh, by the way, it's like the last paragraph. Oh, and they're playing Northwest Christian today at, you know, 4 o'clock over, over at the uh, Willamalane. And it was a great game. And soccer, and Brett tells me all the time, soccer is so different because one team could have so, so many st statistics for them, and you could have next to none. And if it comes down to one shot at the end and you win, then that's the way it works. Well, it was interesting because, once again, the day of the game – I'm reading about Concordia and them being ranked number one and their coach and all this and all that. Well, the next day, and it wasn't on the front page, but the next day in the paper, it said, Northwest Christian topples number one Concordia. And one of my favorite things about cell phones is that they provide great memory. So I took a picture of that, and every time Brett either texts me or calls me, that picture of that part of the register guard comes up on my phone, and I just smile. So... Brett, I'm going to give it to you to talk about that game, and then we're going to watch a clip of that game as the NCU moment of the year. All right. Well, he kind of threw me a curveball there. I didn't realize this was going to happen. But, uh, yeah, the, the day of that game, we went into it just really preaching perseverance to our girls, telling them that anything is possible. We always talk about, hey, this is why we play the game, to have an opportunity to, to do something special. And on that night, that's, that's what happened. Our girls stuck, stuck with it. Um, we had some things go our way, and uh, they, they just kept going. And sure enough, we got the one opportunity, and we made the most of it in overtime. And I think that was uh, the first and the only time that I probably lost my, my cool, if you will, because I went running out onto the field to celebrate with the players because I couldn't believe it. I could not believe it. But... It's a, it's a credit to the girls. It's a credit to just how hard they worked all, all season long.
definitely a thrill of victory moment. Uh, due to that game, too, we ended up getting national recognition. We were on the front page of the NAIA uh, national website, and then also uh, our freshman goalkeeper, Kristen Fulbright, ended up being the NAIA uh, National Player of the Week for women's soccer. So that was really cool. So nice job, Brett, and nice job, NCU women's soccer. Um, next, I would like to bring up uh, Sarah Freeman, and she is going to be presenting our Champions of Character Awards. Even with heels, I'm not that tall. Um, first, before we go into the Champions of Character Award, I kind of want to recognize a couple people here. Um, we're going to start with our Student Athlete Advisory Committee. So all the members of that group, if you guys could stand um, so we could recognize you guys. <laughs> Katie, you can stand. <laughs> This year was our inaugural year with the Student Athlete Advisory Committee, and we met on a monthly basis um, with a couple different things in mind. We wanted to create an avenue of communication. We wanted to know as administration what our student athletes are feeling, what they're talking about, how our teams are doing. Um, and we also wanted to, to give them some leadership opportunities and to get them involved in different aspects of our program. So I just appreciate every one of you guys, and thank you for the hard work that you guys put in this year, and we look forward to next year. We only have a couple members who are graduating, so most of you guys will be back, so we're excited about that. The other group, um, Corey already had you guys stand, but because I believe in you guys and that you guys are so important, I'd like to recognize you again. Our chaplain captains, can you guys please stand? For those of you guys who don't know, um, our chaplain captains. <laughs> They, uh, every team has chaplain captains and they work with our coaches. We, spiritual formation is in, vitally important and embedded in everything that we do. So they aid our coaches and our programs with uh, mentoring, with prayer, and everything that comes along with that. So I thank you guys for your time as well. With that, I wanted to recognize Brittany Yip. She um, ran the half marathon this morning and had family in town, so she couldn't be here today. Um, but she, was actually a recipient of the Champions of Character Award last year and became a full-time employee here. And she has continued to lead our student athlete ministries and just be an amazing mentor and leader for that group of individuals and with all of our students, not just our student athletes. So I just appreciate her and I'd like to recognize her even in her absence. And we're really excited for next year. Um, the work that Brittany did this year, it's actually going to go back to a student next year. So Tyler Fox is actually going to take that role next year and be our student athlete ministry coordinator again. So we're excited for the work that he's going to do with that. So moving into the Champions of Character, which is why I love my job. I get to work with our student athletes, not from, I'm not a coach, so I am not on the field, in the gym, um, but I get to walk alongside them through life and be there through their ups and downs and get to know them all in different types of ways. But it's just such a privilege for me to be a part of their development and character and seeing they inspire me on a daily basis. So um, we're gonna honor two individuals tonight who, like most of you, I think that um, you will, you have seen their achievements and you understand why they will be receiving this awards. But all of our student athletes are champions of character and we preach that in everything that we do. Um, at NCU, we have, for those of you who've been to preview days, have our athletes, you've seen this. For those of you who haven't, we have a athletic department that is Christ-centered. And we have our triathlete model, which we believe that to be a successful student athlete, you need to have three equal parts. That's academics, athletics, and also being a champions of character. We've awarded academics, and that we will soon be awarding the athletic achievements for the year as well. But so for our champions of character, we'll start with our male champion of character. And some things that were said about him, I just want to read first, is that he's determined, he has deep conviction, he's joyful spirited, gracious, wise beyond years, a student of the word, and faithful. This individual came to us um, as a transfer. Last year, um, kind of quiet. I didn't really get to know him, didn't know much about him. He kind of took it into you in. This summer he went um, and worked at a Christian camp. And through that, he was able to come back here and he talked with our student athletes at one of our Cardia chapels and talked about how that changed his life and 
um, just put him back on fire for the Lord and kind of give him some direction. And through that this year, we have seen some amazing leadership through this individual. The things that he's done with his teammates, with the rest of our student athletes, he's been a mentor. He works with the FCA group here on campus. He is a chaplain captain on his program. So many things that he has done. He's also a scholar athlete, so this is a very well-rounded individual. So I would like to bring up right now Tyler Fox, our 2013 male champions of character. For our female Champion of Character Award recipient, I got to know this individual a little bit differently this year. Um, she was a, um, a team teacher with me, and we taught an FYS class together. So I got to see her in a light where she was mentoring other students, and I got to see her love for students um, on a daily basis as she worked with orientation and the incoming freshman class. And so it was just great to see her not on the volleyball court, but doing the work um, of and seeing her character through the things that she was doing on her daily basis. And some things that were said about her is that she has a passion for the homeless. Her tenacity is amazing. She's creative. She's consistent, hardworking, persevering, faithful, an example, and a model of servant leadership. And those of you who know this individual, you know um, she was heavily involved with our Touch Project, which is a um, outreach that we do in the spring that goes and feeds and serves the homeless. And she has continued to do that work on a weekly basis. So she is absolutely a model for us. She also um, is heavily involved with our FCA here on campus. So our 2013 Champions of Character Award is Janelle Fetters. Our next awards are honoring our Athletes of the Year. For our Male Athlete of the Year, this person was a first team all Cascade Collegiate Conference in golf. He finished as the number two player in the Cascade Collegiate Conference this season, following a strong third place showing at the Cascade Conference Championships about a week ago. He's very respected and liked on the course from coaches, teammates, and, and competitors alike. Tyler continues to grow as an academic and spiritual leader for NCU and, in, and for NCU Golf. This is Tyler's second NCU Male Athlete of the Year award. With his senior season still to come, his legacy to NCU Golf and to NCU Athletics would be unprecedented, aiming for a third one. So I'd like to bring up Tyler Falk, our, 19, our 2013 Athlete of the Year. Our female athlete of the year was an unquestioned leader of the NCU women's basketball team. Lindsay led statistically in almost every statistical category. She was a team leader in points scored, averaging 16.4 points per game, in rebounds, averaging 8.8 .8 rebounds per game, assists, averaging 4.1 assists per game, and she also led the team in free throws made and attempted. She also led NCU in scoring at 18 out of 29 games. She led NCU in rebounding in 17 out of 29 games, led NCU in assists in 13 out of 29 games. All the while, she was the number four player in the Cascade Conference in assists, number three in the Cascade Conference in scoring, number three in the Cascade Conference in rebounding, and she was number one in the Cascade Conference in defensive rebounds. She's also a two-time MVP, as voted on by her teammates, and she's also a two-time first-team All-Cascade Conference. While she's also on, the, on most of our career top 10 lists, she's also only played three seasons as she came as a transfer to us two years ago. And she did all this while probably being kind of the center point of any team that we were playing scouting report. Obviously, they would walk in the gym and we got to shut down Lindsay, got to shut down Lindsay. And she was able to come out and lead her team either to victory or be very competitive through all of that. 
And I always joked with her and I always joke with my guys, man, I think she could do some things on our guys team as well. So I would like to introduce our 2013 uh, female, athlete, female athlete of the year, Lindsay Shear. At this time, I'd like to bring up Michael Fuller to present our team of the year and also the Beacon Cup for this year. Many mornings, um, many Monday mornings, Corey and I start our week off talking about how proud we are of each of you. Um, I don't know if a lot of you realize this, Corey just returned from the National NAI Conference in which he had the opportunity to talk with the other athletic directors in our conference. What we are significantly well known for um, at our university is being welcoming incredible people um, who offer up incredible sportsmanship, but we're also known for playing harder, grinding, knocking people down, but also being the, the, the school that picks people back up again after we do that. I just need each of you to know how proud I am of how you represent NCU um, in competition. Um, and uh, with that said, whenever we get an award like this, um, it, it's always tough because there are many of you uh, teams out here that easily, easily could have won this. When we think of the Beacon Cup, um, we think of um, that guiding light, um, someone not just that competed um, on the track or in the field or, or in the gym, um, but someone who brought it all together all at once. And the Beacon Cup, I mean, there's the Super Bowl trophy and there's the Stanley Cup, but this is the Beacon Cup. I mean, this is the big deal, right? So um, as I call this team forward, um, uh, you will know exactly who it represents and, and who it is meant for. This team started off, and part of what was most impressive it's, it's always a little bit easier to me in athletics when you have a couple um, all-star returners that are going to be the glue. Um, this team experienced actually the opposite of that. Um, they lost um, to All-Americans the year before, NAI All-Americans. And uh, they figured out a way to patch it all together, to piece it back together, come off finishing fourth at Nationals the year prior and represent so I would like at this time to call forward our women's cross country team, the award recipients. Come on down while I talk about your accolades. I have to go fast because they run fast. Our women's cross country team finished 14th place in the NAI National Championships, third place at the Cascade Collegiate Conference. Allie Manley named CCC Runner of the Week September 3rd. Emily McLean and Allie Manley earned first team all Cascade Collegiate Conference members. Team members Allie Manley, Emily McLean, Ashley Kinney, As Allison Duvenez, Sierra Schnornoll, Heidi Gorey, Katie Peterson, and Patty Martinez. Also complimented with Coach Hike and Coach Dan, please come up as well. So please join me in congratulating our Beacon Cup winners. You guys gotta look at Congratulations, ladies. With that, that concludes this evening's event.